Hello YouTube, this is Eunice Chan here and today we are talking about, oh, there's hair flying up here, we are talking about how to help you to become a more sociable person and I'm not talking about like pretending to be sociable, pretending to like talking to people, uh, I'm not talking about the act of talking to people, I'm talking about you becoming the person who's actually more sociable which is an amazing thing. This is like something that's really hard to learn until you've learned it. So I'm going to break it down for you. I'm gonna break, break down the inner thoughts, the things that you can do to actually implement this in your life so that socializing becomes easy, all right? So before we dive in, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already um, and also hit the bell button so you don't miss out any of these videos and also like this video also share and forward this to someone if you know that what I'm about to share with you today is going to help someone else let's dive in I know what I'm about to share with you today is going to change your life now let's first break down what sociable means because I find that a lot of times when we like rush into wanting to learn about something, like we want to appear a certain way, but oftentimes we miss out what it really means to be a certain quality. So when we talk about being sociable, it's not just about looking extroverted or looking like you enjoy people's company. Um, let's take the Google like the Google definition, I've actually looked this up, the Google meaning of sociable. So it's being willing to talk and engage in activities with other people, friendly. So I wanted to highlight the word of willingness, right? It's being willing to talk and engage in activities with other people. The key here is your willingness. And your willingness is not, it's, it's not about the act of talking. It's not about the act of being engaged or being friendly or, or listening. It's, it's not an act. It's not something that, you know, being sociable is not something that you do. It's your willingness. So your willingness is actually a quality. It's an internal state. You can't act sociable. Sociable, being sociable is something that you be. So the reason I'm talking about this too is because in my journey of learning to become more sociable, I've realized how actually difficult it was to find like really helpful tips and advice in helping myself becoming a person to be more sociable. Like I, I found very little information that actually helps me to address my deepest fears when I socialize with people, when I meet people, when I spend time with people, I found very little information. A lot of it was about um, looking more sociable. So if you've really tried to um, learn to be more sociable or you've looked up tutorials, you've looked up YouTube videos, a lot of times people will you know, tell you how to look more sociable, but it barely scratches the surface and it rarely ever helps. It rarely addresses the problem in the core and the, the thing that you're really feeling. So what I'm really interested in is how can I not just look comfortable, but actually be comfortable around people? How can I fall in love with engaging with people? How can I fall in love with connecting with people, actually enjoy myself, right? So I don't have to follow like silly cues to look more sociable. Like I don't have to do things to, you know, I don't, I don't want to be a poser, right? Like I want to actually enjoy socializing with my friends, with strangers, with, you know, people that I, you know, have yet to know. And this is exactly why I'm doing this video because, you know, very little information that actually helps me to address my deepest fears when I socialize with people, when I meet people. When... The only reason that we have become 
antisocial or unsociable or you know we have fear of socializing is because we have probably have had unpleasant experiences in the past that have traumatized us that have made, you know we have been in situations where we stayed longer than we wanted to or we've been forced to be in situations or we've been told to look interested when we're not interested and so all those accumulated accumulated negative experiences made us feel like really repulsive around the idea of socializing that's why we don't like it you know it, it taught those uncomfortable experiences taught us that socializing is not a comfortable thing to do so my approach today and well our approach today if you're watching this video and you're following along is to help you remove the discomfort of socializing so that when you remove the discomfort when you remove the icky feelings then you can actually enjoy socializing right it's that simple so it's it's it is a lot simpler than you think like it's actually really easy the key is to enjoy being yourself while you enjoy the company of other people it's that simple it's not an act it's not posing it's you enjoy being yourself in the presence of other people while you enjoy being with other people that's all there is to it right so we're going to bring the enjoyment back into the game so the first thing that i want you to work on is change your approach to the question how are you all right so change your approach to as to how you ask the question and how you receive the question. Now, when we connect with someone or when we are with someone new, when we meet a stranger or when we meet a friend, doesn't matter like who you're meeting with, when we connect with someone, we have a fraction of a second to build a connection, not an impression. We have a fraction of a second to build a connection. And a lot of times, the mistake that a lot of people make is disconnecting from that moment. And we wonder, why is it that we don't manage to connect with other people? Why is it that I hate socializing? Well, it's because we disconnected in the first place. So when people ask, how are you? Instead of like overlooking the question, what, what I am challenging you to do is change your approach to receiving, to listening, and to asking that question, right? So when you are asking, how are you doing? How are you today? Um, how are you feeling? How are you? You know, like ask it with intention, like ask it like you really mean it so that when we're speaking, we're speaking like actual human beings instead of like, hey, how are you? You know, it doesn't actually mean anything. So. When you're asking, ask for something. When you're answering, answer based on how you're really feeling. Like connect with yourself and then tell people, hey, how am I doing? I'm feeling really good today. I just took a walk this morning and it was amazing. The sun was, the sun was shining. I'm loving the weather. Like I just, I'm just feeling that spring in my set today. You know, like answer based on how you really feel and don't disconnect from the moment. Always make sure that you are plugged into the moment because this is the opportunity. You've got like a fraction of a second to build that connection in the first moment. So don't waste it. So the second thing that you can do to be more sociable is ask people questions when you actually want to ask them a question. Now, I've seen a lot of tips around like, oh, prepare a list of like questions that you can ask people, like prepare a list. I'm like, really? Is that how I really want to meet people? Like when, I'm, when I meet someone new, let's say like we meet at a cafe, for example, do I really want to know that you came up with a list to ask me so there's no awkward silence like I can't imagine how that would feel I can't imagine how it would feel to 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 socialize with someone to meet with someone have a connection 
connection with someone when they're so disconnected from the moment, when they're not actually interested in what I have to say, but they're asking questions just to be polite, asking questions just to avoid the, the silence, asking questions just to pretend to be interested, right? So this thing around like asking questions, it's not a performance, it's not an act. It's allowing yourself to ask questions because you are genuinely interested. Because those questions don't actually mean anything if you are not interested. When you are not there, the questions are hollow. Do you understand that? So put yourself back into the center of the equation. You are the X factor. You are the factor that actually makes a difference in the conversation and in the exchange. That is the thing that matters the most. It's not about what you ask. It's not about, you know, like asking about people's jobs, but being genuinely interested with the person that you're meeting without preparing in advance, without thinking, without thinking about the future, without thinking about like creating small talk and asking questions because you're genuinely fascinated by the person. And I promise you, when you bring yourself back into the questioning, when you bring yourself back into getting to know someone for who they are, you don't have to worry about looking polite or filling up a conversation. The third thing I wanna share with you that you can do is look past someone's title or someone's label or someone's like job title. Now, this is one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen people do is that like a lot of times, especially when we go to networking events, you know, we've got that tag, we've got like, we know who's who, we know um, who's like the CEO, who's the GM, who's the director, who's a salesperson. And a lot of times we um, define people, we prejudge people by their titles. And because of that, prejudgment, right? Because of a prejudice or because of an impression that we have impressed on them before we even get to know them, we steal ourselves from the opportunity of getting to know that person like really for who they are. And when we like allow ourselves to go past the title, when we allow ourselves to actually know the person who's behind the title, right? Then, then the a whole world, a whole world of infinite possibilities open up. We get to know what that person likes. We get to know that person's preferences. We get to know that person's stories. We get to know that person like, you know, history, how they got to where they are, you know, what, what they like doing, what are their quirks, what is their personality? And then they start to open up to you, not because you see them as their title, right? But because you see them as the person that they are then they start to feel accepted by you. The mistake that we often do is when we label people, like when we only see people as the title that they are, we put them in a box. And when we tell them, this is who you are, right? I mean, they already know it. But when we tell them, this is who you are, they act in a way where it is only expected. They act in a very predictable way that fits within that title so that we put them in a box because they're not, we don't encourage them to come out of their box and just be, and just like shine their personality, shine their preferences, shine like who they are in the core and, and, and for us to have an opportunity to get to really know their personality. And so this is probably one of the biggest things that I, I would suggest for you to do is just like look past who this person who this person um, does you know in their day job like look past the title and really get to know this person at their core so the fourth thing that you can do and I think this is amazing because this is about coming back to who you are is be honest like be honest about who you are this is not a place when you socialize, it's not an opportunity for you to impress people. Now, I know a lot of times, like, especially in networking events, like we want to put 
our A game out there. We want to impress people so that like people have a reason to keep in touch with us, like so that we are worthy, right? To keep in touch with someone or we are um, a valuable contact to have, right? But be honest about who you are. You're not here to set up a show. You're not here to impress. You don't have to make your life sound more amazing or you don't have to make your job sound more amazing than it actually is. Just be yourself. And the more comfortable you are at being with yourself, people are going to feel it. When you are trying to impress people, when you're trying to make an impression and when you're trying to like manipulate an impression, people can often feel, like people can't really feel what you're making up. People can't tell if your facts are true, but people can often feel that you're not being entirely genuine. Or maybe they'll feel like, oh, you're just like inflating, you know, you're like inflating who you are. But when we can just be comfortable with who we are, we can easily make that connection because we are so in touch with ourselves. We're so connected with ourselves. Um, we are so true to ourselves that people feel that genuine quality. And that leads me to my next point, number five. The fifth thing you can do to enjoy being more sociable is to actually love your life. Right. So the one way to actually like share your life with people, to share your interests with people, um, to share who you are is genuinely be proud of who you are in the first place. So you don't have to act so that you don't have to impress. Um, but then at the same time, you've, you've got a lot of things going on in your life that you don't believe that your life is uninteresting right? So what happens a lot of times is, all right, well, if I, <laughs> if I don't try to impress people, then like, what can I tell people about me? What can I fascinate people about me? What can I captivate people about me? Right? Well, ask yourself, like, is your life fascinating in the first place? Do you have things going on? Do you have an active life? Do you have interests and hobbies that you're actively pursuing? Do you have a passion that drives you, right? Because when we ha make that moment of connection, when it's not about impressing, then it's about opening up. But it's going to be far more easy for you to open up when you actually have something going on, when you are in love with your life, then if you don't have anything to talk about, this is the opportunity to, to really ask yourself, like, am I lit up by my own life? Do I love my own life? Do I have something like interesting and fascinating going on, right? What lights my butt on fire? And this is the place where you just get to open up. You get to open up for who you are instead of shutting people out, right? The, the part that I feel is difficult about socializing, and I feel, I, I feel like a lot of people would resonate with this, is that we feel a kind of shame for not living a life that we want to live. And that's why so many of us prevent ourselves from telling our stories of our lives because we feel somehow shameful that I'm not living the life that I want to live, that my life doesn't look like that person or my life doesn't look like my ideal image. And as a result, I don't want to tell people that because I feel shameful in myself that I don't have that life and so I don't want to share it with others either because I don't want to feel that way or I don't want other people to judge me for it. If we learn to love our life, if we start by loving our life and filling our life with life force and energy and passion, then we will have plenty to share without having to try and make things up. So the sixth thing that you can do also is something that goes against a lot of like, you know, socializing tips. So my advice, and you, you don't have to take it if this doesn't resonate with you, is to 
just go with the flow instead of like pre-planning the conversation. Um, earlier I talked about like pre-planning asking questions, but now I'm talking about like just dropping the idea of pre-planning conversations all together. Take planning out of the way. Like if there are things that you actually want to discuss, like if you, if there are things that you genuinely want to know about the person, then ask it, right? Then engage with them in that conversation. The key here is practice to be in the flow and to let the present moment carry you away. You know, like a lot of times we, um, we, we, people say like, Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I just got so carried away. It's the carried away. That is the most fun in conversations. Like that's how you carry, get carried away in conversations. Um, when you're so in the moment, the moment just takes you along. So practice going with the flow, practice being present in the moment. And I can promise you the conversation will like just take your attention and you will, it will take you in a direction where you don't even expect and you will end up who knows where in terms of just, you know, what you get to talk about and um, where, where you end up in the, in the conversation and in the relationship, it's going to be so interesting to find out when you just drop the planning altogether and practice being in the present and noticing the things around you. The final and last tip that I have for you is visualize having a good time, like with you and the people that you're with. So I think a lot of times when we think about like, how to improve our socializing, how to become more sociable, is that we focus so much on the fear that we forget to hold space for the enjoyment, right? And so what I mean by that is there are a lot of tips that are um, targeted towards like what to do when you're scared or what to do when you don't feel present, um, what to do to not let people know that you're not confident. But what I find is the core of the matter is to just hold space to have a good time. Like when you're giving all of your energy into battling the fear and you're not spending any, any of your energy in creating that scenario and that environment and that vision that you really want to experience, it kind of becomes difficult to actually have that experience in the first place. You know what I mean? So when we change how we feel about that vision and we actually get excited about it, instead of thinking about, oh, what's so scary about it? We think about, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You know, you know, I'm going to meet this person. I'm going to find out this. I'm going to, I'm going to experience this. It's going to be so cool. It's, it's going to be an event. Um, you know, I'm going to meet like so-and-so like actually like visualize yourself having a good time. That's how you heighten your emotions inside of you. And that feeling changes your whole energy field. Then you walk into the place genuinely excited because you held the space for it. So visualize yourself feeling good, visualize yourself having a good time and then hold that feeling in your body as you carry yourself into the place so that you're not just like thinking about your fears and thinking about your insecurities all the time, right? Then you can actually hold the feeling of enjoying the, the, the act of socializing with other people, which is the, the main thing that we are talking about here today. So those were the seven tips on helping you becoming more sociable. I hope that you're able to implement like one, if not all of these, some, if not all of these. Um, but I want to like share some final thoughts with you. Like a lot of these tips that I've shared with you today, a lot of it is about becoming aware of our opinion of ourselves instead of um, judging ourselves, judging our life, thinking small about ourselves is to return ourselves back to enjoying living our life, enjoying connecting with people, right? Enjoying um, being in the company of other people instead of like having to pretend or act or like having to look a certain way and loving your life the way it is. And so that you can, when you love your life, you can tell people, this is how my life looks like, right? So then I don't need a script. I don't need to prepare a conversation. 
and learning to be genuinely interested in people like this goes for everywhere you go in life not just like when you you know are in a networking event with people but like being genuinely interested in people i find like opens up a lot of doors to connections and last but not least always being present and connected to the moment always 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 instead of like pre-planning everything in your head um, orchestrating and manipulating how everything has to go right like actually allowing yourself to be connected in the moment so that you know when we're having this conversation i am here with you my mind is not anywhere else so when you follow these tips you will never ever miss a beat you will never miss the fun in socializing um and so let me know which was the tip that resonated with you the most and put it down in the comments or if you're like starting to implement some of these like tell me which ones you're implementing and how you find if you haven't subscribed to my channel already please do because i have a lot of these like tips and videos and you know um that I'm going in this general direction that I would love to share with you. That's all for today. I hope you genuinely enjoyed it. And uh, thank you for spending this time with me. I will see you guys in the next video.